Wireshark, what is it and how can it help you? Let's get started. I remember one day when I was working in a SOC and the SOC manager had came up to me and asked me to analyze a PCAP. Let me tell you, I was extremely nervous because I did not know where to start or even what to look for. All I knew was that people used a program called Wireshark. So that's what I did. I went and downloaded Wireshark. Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer and can really save your butt when it comes to analyzing PCAPs. If we go on the FAQ page, Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer that lets you capture and interactively browse the traffic running on a computer network. The key here is to interactively browse the traffic. If you are the type of person that likes to work in a graphical user interface versus a command line interface, then Wireshark is perfect for you. However, though, do keep in mind that although Wireshark can do a lot of great things, it does have its limitations. For example, if a PCAP is larger than 500 megs, it starts to bog down the application quite a bit. Because if you recall, it is a network protocol analyzer. If you were to think about how much data is within that 500 meg PCAP, it's quite a bit of data to go through and analyze. But the good news is that there are ways around it. For example, if you were to download and install Wireshark, it will come with programs such as T-Shark installed as well. What T-Shark can do for you is read that 500 meg PCAP and filter for things that you're interested in. For example, let's just say we're interested in a destination IP for all traffic going towards 8.8.8.8. Well, you can run a filter on T-Shark and output it into another PCAP. That way, you can then use Wireshark to read that PCAP, which should have a much more manageable size, and it can open up a lot quicker. Enough of me talking, let's go straight to a demo. All right, onto our demo machine. We'll first head over to Wireshark's main site and then click on Get Started. Once we're there, we have a couple options on which Wireshark we want to download. We got the full installer, a portable app, and also different OS for Wireshark. Because I am running on a Windows machine, I am going to download the full version. Once Wireshark is downloaded, double click the setup file and then go through the prompts. If you recall earlier, I did mention a tool called T-Shark and that is this right here. You wanna make sure that that is checked so T-Shark is included with your installation. Once Wireshark is done installing and you open up Wireshark, this is what you should see. You are presented with a capture screen and it will show and display all of the network adapters that is attached to your computer. Now you can go ahead and double click whichever adapter you would like and it would start capturing traffic based on that network adapter. I'll go ahead and double click the adapter for loopback traffic capture for this demo. Immediately it starts capturing traffic. So I'm just gonna quickly stop that over here. Starting at the top, you have your menu. So you got your file, edit, view, go, capture, and a lot of other different tabs. Beneath that, you have a filter. And this filter, you can start typing in, for example, IP or TCP. Now, Wireshark has a lot of cheat sheets out there that can help you with filters. Under the filter, we are presented with the packet list pane. This is essentially a high level view of all the packets that are going or captured through the wire. Now, beneath the packet list pane on the bottom left hand corner, so this one over here, this is called the packet bytes pane. You might notice that it is sorted by OSI layer. So if you're familiar with the OSI layer, it would all make sense. The first one is layer one, at the bottom, layer two, layer three, layer four, and etc. On the right hand side, this is called the packet bytes pane. It shows you the hex as well as the ASCII if you have that selected. So this actually looks straight into the data and gives you all that nice information. I wanna show you some of the quick wins that we can use with Wireshark. Whenever I open up Wireshark to analyze a PCAT file, generally the first thing I do is under the statistics tab, you can actually find out some more information regarding the PCAP. For example, the first option there says capture file properties. I'll click on that and it'll tell me immediately what the first packet and the last packet were. 
as well as the duration of this capture. This is extremely important because if you're handed a PCAP and they mention that, hey, this PCAP should be starting from this date and ending at this time. Using the capture file properties, you can confirm whether or not the PCAP that you have is the correct PCAP or not. The second thing that I like to look at is the protocol hierarchy. If we click on statistics and click on protocol hierarchy, we get a list of protocols that exist in this PCAP. So at the bottom, we can see that it's ICMP as well as TCP protocol. Now this is using my loopback demonstration, but I'll open up another PCAP later, and this will provide you with a bunch of information that you can quickly filter, simply right-clicking anything, and then click apply as filter or prepare as filter. Now very quickly, the difference between the two, if I click on apply as filter and click selected, Wireshark would immediately filter for this. Whereas if I click on prepare as filter and hit selected, Wireshark would put this filter to my display filter. For example, let me just click this right here. Now you can see at the top, it has been applied. However, if I go back into protocol hierarchy, right click, apply as filter and hit selected, you immediately see that Wireshark automatically applied the filter. So that's the difference between apply and prepare. The next one that is really good is conversations. This will tell you the conversations between one host to another host. We'll click on IPv4 and then we can see our conversation. Quickly, we can sort it by bytes if we like to make sure that the highest communicator is at the top. This could provide us with a quick win, especially if we noticed a high transfer outbound to maybe an IP that is not so good. Again, you can right click this and click apply as filter or prepare as filter. Next, I did wanna talk about endpoints. This will quickly tell us what endpoints exist in this PCAP. Again, if we go into IPv4, now it is my loopback. However, you do see my IP address here. Now, if there were more than one host in this capture file, we would see multiple IPs here. One cool thing about Wireshark is that it has the ability to export objects. For example, you can export something from HTTP. Imagine I'm a user and I click on that phishing link. And let's just say that link is hosting a malicious file on that web server. And that web server is also using an HTTP protocol. So if we have a full packet capture running, we can actually extract that file that was downloaded and then we can prepare or perform malware analysis. I went out and I downloaded a PCAP from malware traffic analysis to use as an example because that is a lot better than looking at my loopback data. Now that I opened it in Wireshark, we can quickly go into statistics and click on capture file properties because I am interested to know what the duration is, what the first and last packet was. Taking a look, the first packet was on January 5th, 2251, and it ended in January 5th, 2256. So the duration was about five minutes. Awesome. The next thing I wanna do is take a look at the protocol hierarchy. What kind of protocols exist in this capture file? So we have SSDP, NTP, NetBIOS, domain name systems, just a bunch. Oh, look at that, simple mail transfer protocols. So we noticed that there's some kind of mail activity in this PCAP along with hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP. Now, because I do know that it has HTTP, I can try and export the objects from HTTP to see what kind of files exist. When we take a look, we notice that there was a file downloaded from a host name called savory.com.bd, and it was an image, the size, as well as the file name. The file name is kind of sketchy. Maybe something I could download. If you wanted to download it, all you need to do is click on it and click on save all or save, and then it will go save onto your computer. And then of course, take a look at the file, make sure it's actually a PNG and not an EXE or a DLL. And if it's either or, you can perform malware analysis to find some additional pivot points. The next example, we can click on statistics and go into conversation. Here, we will go into IPv4 and sort it by byte. Now we can immediately take a look and see who's the top talker. So we notice that an internal IP is going out to this .101 IP address. I would perform OSINT now to take a look and try to obtain additional context, or we can click on apply as filter and select it. Now you might notice that there's an A and B and there's a lot of arrows. 
Now this arrow is a direction. If you notice that the arrow is pointing to A and pointing to B, that's a bi-directional filter. Whereas if you see A to B, you can kind of see it as a A as your source IP, B as your destination IP. So I only want to see traffic coming from the source to that destination. I'll click on bi-directional. I like seeing this just to make sure I don't miss anything. Now we only see the traffic between the two hosts. Another cool feature that Wireshark has is that you can rebuild or reassemble packets. For example, we notice that in this PCAP it has SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So I will right click it and apply it as filter, hit select, and I'll just close out this window. You can take a look at the packet list pane, and then you can take a look at the packets like that, or you can right click and then click on follow, and you can rebuild the TCP stream here. What this will essentially do is provide you with the communication between the server and the client and vice versa. This is a lot easier for us analysts to take a look and follow through the chain of events. Again, very quickly, touching on display filters, they are super powerful for you and there are a lot of cheat sheets out there to help you with your investigation. If you don't know what to filter on, you can always just right click anywhere in Wireshark and apply or prepare that filter. I did want to talk about the limitations of Wireshark and it is opening up very large PCAP files. 208 megs for this file here is not too too big compared to a gig that I've seen. However, this might still bog Wireshark down. What we can do is if we know what we're looking for, we can utilize a tool like T-Shark to cut it down using our filters. And then we can use Wireshark to open up the newly outputted PCAP. I'll show you a demonstration here. Let's pretend that a SOC manager had handed you a two gig PCAP and asked you, can you identify or check this PCAP to see if the IP address of 173.194.166.39 exists? Or maybe is there any communication between any of our internal hosts talking to this IP? You have a couple options here. However, jumping straight into Wireshark would likely do you no good. It'll probably take about 30 minutes or an hour for it to finish analyzing. And if you were to type in any display filter, again, it would reanalyze everything and it will take a long time. So instead, we'll use T-Shark to filter in on that IP and I'll put a new PCAP. In order to do that, we'll open up PowerShell. Once we open up PowerShell, make sure you go into the directory of where your Wireshark is currently installed. From there, you should be able to see T-Shark. We'll type in T-Shark and hit tab just to make sure that it exists. Next, we wanna type in the options dash R to read a PCAP and point it to the PCAP of interest. So in my case, it is data.pcap. Next, we'll type in dash W to output the PCAP. And you wanna output a directory so your PCAP can be saved there. For the sake of this demo, I'll use the same directory of where the data.pcap resides. However, I'll name this as new data.pcap. Next, we wanna enter in our display filter. Now, again, if you don't know how to use the display filter, we can always search it online. For example, I searched up Wireshark display filter and this is what came up. Because our request from the SOC manager was to look for an IP address, no matter the direction of it being a source IP or destination IP, in that case, I wanna look for what is called IP.adder or address versus ip.dest or ip.source because this is a very narrow search, right? If you were to use ip.dest, it will only filter on communications towards that IP. Now, if you use ip.source, it will look for communications sourcing from that IP. Whereas if you look for ip.adder, it'll look through both directions. And that's the one we want. So back to our PowerShell, we'll type in ip.adder equals equals because if we look at our example, it has ip.adder equal equal. And then I'll just copy this IP here, but it is 173.194.166.39. And I'll hit enter. And that's it. Now, of course, this PCAP was only 208 megs, but in your case, or in our pretend scenario, it was about two gigs. And in the back, 